Although I don't really know how useful a bullet journal would be in a desert island scenario. If I had to choose, these are what I would bring with me. Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T. How? And today I'm going to be talking about my bullet journaling essentials. Now, if you're new to bullet journaling, all you really need is some kind of notebook or binder with paper and something to write with. And that's it. When I started my bullet journal, I had a set of fine liners and a set of colored pencils, and that was it. But as time has gone on, I've gotten a little bit more creative with it, and I tend to make a lot more complicated spreads than I used to. And over the past four years of bullet journaling, I've amassed quite the collection of tools and supplies, but today I decided to narrow it down to my top 10 bullet journaling essentials that I absolutely can't live without. This first one might be obvious, but it is my bullet journal itself. And yes, I know what you're thinking, this is not a notebook, it is a binder. But for 2021, I actually decided to move my bullet journal into a binder for a few reasons. Um, if you saw my bullet journal binder video, you already know, but if you haven't and you wanna hear more about it, I will link that video in the description because I go way into depth about this and my paper and my tabs and all of that. But I will mention in this video that one of my favorite things about having a binder instead of just a notebook is all of the added storage it gives me. This binder in particular has this zippered storage pocket built in. So if I wanted to, I could carry at least one of all of the items, not just pens, items that I'm going to mention in the rest of this video in my binder and I would never have to carry an external pencil pouch or anything like that so I could bullet journal on the go and have everything that I would need. Now, when I do set up my bullet journal, I like to sketch out a fair amount of my spreads before I use ink. And for that, you need a good pencil and a good eraser, which are items number two and number three on my list. My favorite pencil right now is the Tombow Monograph Mechanical Pencil, and mine is in the color Ice Blue. Now, did I choose this color because it's almost exactly the same as my Volkswagen Beetle? Maybe. Now, the pencil itself isn't like anything spectacular, it's just a very nice mechanical pencil, but one of the main selling points for me was the eraser. The Monograph pencil actually contains a tiny version of the very popular and raved about mono eraser. Prior to this pencil, I could not find a pencil, whether it was a regular graphite pencil or a mechanical pencil, where I really liked the quality of the eraser. But unlike mechanical pencil lead, erasers are not always going to work with every mechanical pencil. So I liked that this pencil had a design where as you use up the eraser, you can twist the top and more will come out. And yes, when you run out, you do have to buy the refills from Tombow because there's not really like a compatible replacement out there that's not from Tombow. The refills are actually super inexpensive and you get three erasers for only $2. So I think it's a good deal. I've been using this for a little over three months and I still have about half of the eraser left. So at that rate, these will last me a year and a half. $2 every year and a half isn't bad at all. And I think it's a very sturdy, a very nice looking, and a very comfortable to use pencil and I would totally recommend it. Next up is my favorite fine liner for drawing layouts, aka anything that I draw with a ruler. So like the boxes in my monthly spread or if I'm drawing a circle with my circle maker, this is the pen I go for. This is the Tombow Mono Drawing Pen in the size 03. Not only is it just a nice quality fine liner, I have found that its felt tip can hold up very well to being dragged along a ruler many, many times before fraying. Because you can buy these individually, if I were to ruin it or if it just runs out of ink because I use it so much, I can just buy the one I want and I don't have to buy like a set of six like I do with the Sakura Pigma fine liners. So for all those reasons, it has become my go-to fine liners for drawing layers. Layouts. This next one is my favorite brush pen to use in my bullet journal 
and the final Tombow product, I promise. It is the Tombow Fudenosuke Hard Tip Brush Pen in Black. Again, I never know if I'm saying that right, so feel free to tease me. I probably deserve it. This is the brush pen that I learned to do calligraphy with. Well, not this one in particular because I've gone through many of them, but this is the type of pen that I went out and bought. I got the Soft and Hard Tip 2-pack from the craft store, and that's how I learned to do calligraphy. And now that I've had the opportunity to try a bunch of brush pens, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite overall brush pen. That one would be the Sakura Pigma brush pen, but the reason this one is my favorite for bullet journaling is the size. The Sakura Pigma brush pen is quite large, so in the spreads that I create, it just is too big. It doesn't fit, especially in weekly spreads. But the Hard Tip Fudenosuke is actually the perfect size that I have found for my dot grid, which has five millimeter spacing. I can comfortably write in calligraphy or print or however I want to use the pen, and it will fit in between the dots. And I love adding calligraphy in my bullet journal no matter what my theme is. So for that reason, it is an essential. Next up is a good quality metal ruler. I prefer metal over plastic because plastic rulers tend to chip over time and metal rulers are not going to. So your lines will always be perfectly straight. This one in particular was a gift from Mike, my fiance, um, our first Christmas together after I started bullet journaling. So. I like that it has that sentimental value, and if you watch my Plan With Me videos, you know that I always pull this bad boy out when I'm setting up my bullet journal. Now, with that being said, I also have this little plastic one because this one's just a bit too long to fit in my bullet journal binder. So even though I prefer the metal ruler, I do keep this little plastic one with me in my bullet journal binder just in case I'm out and about and I really need a straight edge, I will use this. But when I do my big setup for the month, I prefer to use the metal one. Next up along the same vein is my Helix Angle and Circle Maker. When I bought this, I never thought that it would ever become an essential. I bought it for one specific purpose and that was to draw a birth chart. But since then, I have found so many uses for it and it comes in handy so often that I couldn't not include it in this list. It has eight circles that you can trace starting at one eighth of an inch and going up to one inch in eighth inch increments. That's a tongue twister. But then it also has these little holes that are spaced out every sixteenth of an inch so that you can draw any size circle up to four inches in diameter. And then the outside is a protractor so that you can draw any angle you want which for most of us, unless we're taking a math class, isn't super useful. But what I have found it to be very useful for is to divide up a circle into even sections. I used this over and over in my astrological bullet journal spreads video because I drew a ton of circles that I needed to divide into 12 equal sections for the 12 zodiac signs. So when I bought this, I did not know it would become an essential for me, but now I can't imagine my life without it. Next up is my favorite fine liners to doodle with, which are the Sakura Pigma Micron fine liners. Now this whole thing is not just fine liners. I also have some plastic nibs and brush pens in here. I have quite a few. I have every single size they make of the fine liners as well as the graphic collection. So I have all of them. <laughs> and now that I have the mono drawing pen, I've been able to keep these nicer for longer because I'm never scraping them against a ruler in order to draw layouts. They are just for doodling. Now, all of the items I mentioned so far are mostly used to set up my spreads. I don't really use them that much day to day with my bullet journal, but the last two things on the list are the things that I use every single day with my bullet journal when I'm actually using it. First up is my favorite pen to use in my bullet journal, and brace yourselves, it's erasable. I know, I'm as surprised as you, but for whatever reason, I have actually found an erasable pen that actually writes well and can be erased. Funny part about it is I wasn't even looking for an erasable pen when I bought these. I bought these because they were cute animal pens. 
That was the only reason. I bought them to include in a friend's birthday gift as well as a giveaway that I did last year. And then I started using them and fell in love with them. These are just adorable little kawaii cute animal pens. They're 0.35 millimeters. They're technically black ink but I would say that they write more of a dark gray. Now I will say that if you're actively writing in your bullet journal and you erase what you wrote right away you are going to get the best result but even like days or a week later I can still erase things that I've written in my bullet journal. It's just there might be some faint ghost of what I had written that stays behind to haunt the paper. For an erasable pen, I can't really complain because I'm used to those awful blue erasable pens from the 90s that like were the worst thing ever. So to be able to use these on a day-to-day -day basis and not get sick of them is kind of saying a lot. They're just a random pen I found on Amazon. I don't even know the brand. I will link them below if you're interested. But yeah, this is like what I use now. I don't even know who I am. And last but not least, I have my Zebra Mild Liners. I know, could I be any more basic? But there's a reason everyone talks about these. They act like highlighters, but they're not as vibrant, hence the term mild liners. They come in prettier colors than highlighters. The pen itself is visually appealing. I mean, it ticks all of the boxes. Once in a while, I'll use these in my bullet journal setup. A good example would be this month, I used one green fine liner for the entire setup, and that was the only color I added to any of my spreads. But what I usually use these for is at the beginning of the month, I will choose one color that best complements my theme for the month. And the main thing I use it for is to fill in my habit trackers every day. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you might remember that I used to keep these in a tiny pink mug on my nightstand because the idea was I would journal at night and then fill in my habit tracker as part of like my bedtime routine. But my nighttime slash evening routine has been changing a bit these days and now I try to do this thing that I call a daily debrief which is done at the end of my quote work day. So even when I'm not physically at work, at the end of my at home work day, I take my bullet journal and I cross off any tasks that I finish or write down any tasks that I need to take care of the next day. And then I go to my habit tracker and I color in any of the habits that I did that day. And that's kind of part of my daily debrief. So I still use the mild liners, but I don't keep them on my nightstand anymore. I actually keep them in this little caddy. And if I want to carry this out to the living room or upstairs, I can, but this is where I store them now. Occasionally, I might use them to highlight an important task, but most of the time what I use them for is my habit trackers. Oh, and also my water tracker, which is in the fitness section of my bullet journal. I also have one in my wedding planning binder, of course. And those are my bullet journaling essentials. Now obviously I use other things to bullet journal. I have a bunch of different markers, I have stickers, I have washi tape, but if like I had to pick 10 things and get dropped off on a desert island, these are what I would choose. Please let me know in the comments what your bullet journaling essentials are and if any of yours are the same as mine. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing because it's my goal to reach a thousand subscribers by my birthday, which is April 29th, so we still have a little bit of time left. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>